Hello everyone, I hope you are doing great. I have gotten some messages asking me to do a breakdown of this animation, so here it is. First of all, a piece of information that some people might not be aware of. In this latest version of Blender 4.1, uh, Open Image Denoise supports GPU acceleration. So if you go to uh, Render here and then Denoise, uh, in the Denoiser, if you select Open Image Denoise, make sure to check this Use GPU uh, checkbox. Because usually for, um, for viewport, I use optics because it's just faster. But uh, open image denoise gives better results visually. So for the final render, I, use, I usually use that. But now with the GPU acceleration, it's significantly faster. So you would be missing out if you don't use this. I made this model in Blender and then textured it in Substance Painter. I will put up both the Blender project as well as the Houdini project file on my Gumroad. Um, so you can access both the model and the textures if you want to put it in your personal scenes uh, or you, you can also check out the node tree in Houdini if you want to see exactly how it works but I will explain it in this tutorial. In order to not make the file size very large I will not include the Alembic file but if you want this exact animation you can just cook the nodes in Houdini. I exported my mesh from Blender as an FBX but I could have done uh, an OBJ instead since this is a static mesh it's not going to change anything. I think uh, OBJ might have been better because the file size is lower. Uh, I subdivided uh, the mesh one level and then I uh, scaled it down to 0.1 just to match the Houdini grid a little bit. I then remeshed it to reduce the poly count and make my uh, effect run a little bit smoother. I used the target size of 0 0.03. Then I added a group node to select the, the start of my effect. It's going to be these top points here. And the, this group is going to drive, I call it start, it's going to drive the mops nodes. Yeah, so as you can see here, I used the mops library. Uh, it's the free version of mops. So the ones I used mainly as mops spread fall off. And this is the effect, it's quite simple. So I, I will explain why I have two nodes here. The first one here uh, has a fall off attribute that's called mask. It's the one that drives the wave that's moving through the object. Whereas the second one uh, with a fall off attribute called uh, gold is the one that drives the golden texture. The start point of my fall off is the group I defined earlier, start. And then for animate, uh, I, I keyframed this spread here, the one you can see uh, between frame 1 and 180. And the rest uh, fall off width and all of this is it's really dependent on your model. You're gonna have to tweak these settings depending on your model, but these are the values that work for me. Uh, for the noise, uh, I don't think I, yeah, I don't think I added noise. I, I wanted it to look smooth so I, I had no noise and then for the remap uh, so let's go back to the this is the mask for the wave as you can see it's it, it literally has the form of a wave so I want my mask to have uh, high values here in the middle and then in the edges I want it to go to zero whereas for the for the gold uh, golden texture I want it to have the same uh, the same form as my wave but uh, for the uh, rightmost edge, I want the values to be 1, so that my mask stays as a value 1 uh, where the wave passes, if I explain myself correctly. Because if you notice, these uh, values are going to be the exact, so let's let's take point 0.2, you can see position 0.22 and then 0.26, it's going to be the same here, almost. So they're quite, they're on top of each other, but the golden texture uh, keeps the values that it passes, whereas the wave goes down, that's the difference. That's how I have the effect that whenever there is an area where the wave passes, it leaves behind a trail, a golden trail. In order to not tweak uh, these values between these two, what I did is, uh, if you can see here, you can see that all these uh, fields here are green. Uh, this output max as well. And then the start point. It's just by going to, uh, for instance, these parameters, I right click, and then you can copy parameter. And then go to this right click and then paste a relative reference so whenever i change a value in a field here it also uh, gets duplicated in this one the only thing that's not copied is of course the the remap fall off because i want it to, it's it's a bit different from the other one just so you can see i checked the preview fall off so this is my wave uh, you can see that it moves through my object here and then if i preview my uh, gold mask you can see that it's it's the same as the wave, it, they have the same uh, edges, 
but when the wave stops here the gold the gold uh, mask keeps the same values for the fall off that's that's what makes this effect and then to finish my wave effect uh, I included that in uh, I piped that into a point vop if you go inside you can see that I'm using the this node called displace long normals and I'm using a bind to uh, to get my mask attribute and I'm using that to drive the amount of the displacement and then uh, position into position and then I output the displace the displaced position as the final position so whenever the value of my mask is uh, not equal to zero it's going to change the amount but uh, yeah I don't think I remapped yeah I just played with the scale here because uh, I haven't remapped this mask attribute so I just played with the scale to get something uh, I like so as you can see here I can play with the scale if I wanted to go up or down into the negative values and then here in my attribute copy uh, let me turn off the preview in my attribute copy I just um, copy the gold mask into this uh, main uh, geo stream so that I have it here as well um, and then this is the magic node point deform so I use that to uh, get my high poly um, version so the one that's subdivided uh, this node here takes three inputs it when you put your your hover your cursor on the inputs it will tell what it is so the first is the mesh deform so in my case it's the high poly version the second input is rest point lattice so this means uh, my low poly version that's deformed but in its resting state so this is the output of my group or i can yeah i can even take it from my remesh it's going to be the same and then uh, the third input is the deformed point lattice so this is just the output of my uh, my point vop or i or it's the same attribute copy it doesn't change anything i just have an extra attribute here and uh, with that node it will replace your uh, low poly version with a high poly one while keeping the while keeping the 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 positions of the vertices from your uh, low poly version it's quite magical i find and then in the end here i just transfer uh, all of my masks that i just created into my newly high poly deformed mesh because if we if we check we don't have we don't have these uh, masks we just created in this one so we just uh, use a attribute transfer i think it use it uses proximity to transfer the attributes between uh, points uh, even even if we have different topologies between these two it doesn't matter because it's going to be it's going to look good enough for what we we want to do and then finally in the export phase uh, i use the remap node to uh, to make uh, yeah to remap my gold attribute um, to a, a value of 0 to 1 uh, here i used uh, this button i think compute range so it just it calculates the minimum and max uh, by itself and then you can just remap that to 0 and 1 then here i have an attribute wrangle uh, because if i'm not mistaken blender still does not support custom attributes so what I did is uh, a little bit of cheating. So I, I wrote that into the color attribute, the red channel. I wrote the gold mask into the red channel of the color attributes. And then I set the green and blue ones to zero because I will not be using them. You could have set them to one. It wouldn't change anything. I think it will just uh, change the color here in the viewport. Maybe it's going to be uh, more visible. But uh, as uh, for the output, we're only going to, in Blender, we're going to extract the red channel and use that to drive the mask. And then I just use an attribute blur to smooth out uh, both the color and the position a little bit. If you, you can see the difference here. And then finally, before exporting, to not have a a, a huge file that has attributes that I will not be using in Blender as well as groups, I just used a clean node. So I removed all the groups and I removed all the attributes. Yeah, I think this is just an artifact from when I was cleaning my uh, node tree. Uh, maybe a better way to do this is just star. So take everything except UV. So I want to keep my UVs. I also want to keep the CD attribute because I will use the red channel uh, and my name attribute because it will be used by my Rob Lambic here. Render frame range and then uh, check build hierarchy from attribute and use the path attribute name so that we have three separate measures and it will be easier to assign textures once in Blender. Now if we take a look at the shading tab in Blender, um, I'm looking at this material here for the cap, 
you can see that uh, the stop part here is my uh, original texture I made in Substance Painter. And then this is the uh, what, the part that interests us. I'm using a mixed shader. Uh, for the first shader, I'm, I'm using my original texture. And the second texture, I'm using this uh, Golden Principle BSDF with some smudges and scratches to uh, simulate that um, golden metallic feel. And then I'm driving that uh, with my color attribute that I exported in Houdini. I'm using a separate color to extract the red channel. As we said, we're not going to be using the other two. And then I'm just uh, remapping this node here to my preference. You can see I can change, for instance, how far the the gold goes. Yeah, it's this is just preference. The lighting is even simpler. Uh, I'm using two area lights, uh, one uh, at the back here, and then the other one. Yeah, the front here, just my my front. Yeah, this one is actually the one creating the gobo. So I'm I've used these techniques this technique multiple times. I showed it in my previous tutorials. Um, if we check the texture, it's it is same as before, Voronoi texture dri drive in the alpha, so we have holes in the in this plane, and then it's creating this gobo here. And then I have an infinite background and an HDRI, of course. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you learned something new. Have a great day.